tonight we're going to be talking about six month olds and the three things that you need to know to make sure that your six month old is going to be a fantastic sleeper. So I'm going to be talking about the top three things, just three which is really simple, a quick three take homes for you to learn about your six month old baby. So if you've got a baby under six month old and you're listening tonight, this is going to be a great talk for you. If you've got a baby just older than six months, then this also is going to be fantastic for you. So you'll learn what you hopefully should have ticked off by now if you're wanting to head towards having a fantastic, great sleeper. So six month old sleep tutorial, that is what we're doing tonight. I'm Emma, the owner of Baby Sleep Consultant New Zealand and Australia, and I'm a certified infant and child sleep consultant, and this is what I do full time. So we have a team of consultants who are right across New Zealand, they can come into your homes and help you, and we do phone consultations and email support one on one. We have a few ebooks and that sort of thing available if you're after something smaller, but basically, we help you teach your children how to be fantastic sleepers. So, tonight, six month old sleep tutorial top three things that you need to know to create a fantastic sleeper out of your six month old, and then at the end of my three messages tonight, I'll be doing a sleep Q&A. So if you have a sleep question for me, there are some on the post from today that I'll be answering. Otherwise, pop it in the comments below and I will answer it for you during this live chat. And if you are watching this as a replay, then please ask me your questions in the comments and I will type up some answers for you later on. Okay, so six month old baby. If you have one, congratulations. You made it through, you survived, you survived the newborn stage. And the newborn stage is intense, you know. We're worried about making sure that we are doing everything just right, we're figuring out how to be a parent, we're trying to sort out breastfeeding, and sometimes it's just a bit of a blur and then suddenly you've got this six month old baby. So three things that you can start thinking about if you have a six month old baby, and maybe they're not the best sleeper, or you just wanna make sure that you stay on a great track because you're already on a fantastic track. And I'm going to pop in the comments below for you to have a look at and you can save it to your computer, you can share it, and it's just a quick infographic which is going to summarize these three things so you can save that so you'll always remember these three things that you need to know about your six month old baby. So in no particular order, <laughs> number one is that you definitely need to unswaddle your six month old baby. So I know that with newborns, you know, we're all swaddle, 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 and then suddenly, confusing, bang, we're like, unswaddle your baby. If you haven't weaned off the swaddle by six months, then six months is a great age to definitely take the swaddle away. And I know there's going to be a few of you out there who are saying, but my six month old really loves their swaddle, and they make swaddles in bigger sizes, you know, seven, eight, nine months plus. But to be honest, Swaddling past six months is a number one not very safe because your baby will begin to roll over from back to tummy and we definitely don't want them swaddled for that to be occurring because then obviously they're gonna land on their faces and not have their arms to push up and, and clear their own airways. But the other thing is that swaddling as much as it is a fantastic tool to help our newborns get to sleep, it begins to become become a sleep prop if you have a baby over six months. So this wonderful tool for newborns actually becomes an almost negative sleep prop much beyond six months. So we have clients come to us and they're still swaddling, you know, at nine, 10 months old. And by this point, the child is well and truly addicted to the swaddle. So it, it's like trying to get rid of a dummy or trying to stop rocking to sleep. It's a definite addiction for the baby. But the problem is that Children over six months want to start exploring with their their hands, you know, they want to start putting their hands in their mouths and they want to start rolling over and exploring the space in their cot associated with sleep. And so if you prevent them from doing this with a the swaddle, then often we see that their sleep starts to fall apart. So it's not just that we are safe sleep Nazis or anything like that. I do see that sleep starts to really fall apart beyond six months if you don't move on from swaddling to a sleeping bag. So I can't recommend enough that from six months, if you haven't yet, make sure you stop swaddling and move on to a sleeping bag. Under six months, I tend to wean off the swaddling and it's a gradual process. 
But after six months, you can pretty much just cold turkey take the swaddle away and pop the baby in a sleeping bag. They might not be too impressed with it, but 99% of the time their startle reflex has gone, so there is really no need to wean them onto the sleeping bag. And people can get confused because, you know, they'll try to use a sleeping bag with one arm out and a, and a swaddle over one arm with a six-month-old baby, and they won't like it, and they'll cry so they think they need to keep swaddling, but that's just because it's already a little bit of a prop for your baby. So just be confident in your decision and get rid of the swaddle at six months. Okay, number two thing at six months is you want to start to realize that your baby can definitely consolidate their midday nap. So by consolidate their mid midday nap, I mean stop catnapping. So if you have a baby who's still catnapping, and I'm sure there's loads of people out there watching who have got kids under six months who are like, yeah, my kid's still catnapping. You know, and those, those catnaps in the early days, those 45 minute sleeps, they can be quite normal. It's just your baby waking up after a sleep cycle and their circadian rhythm is developing and they're beginning to learn, you know, very slowly the skills to resettle themselves and go back to sleep. So if you haven't managed to get on top of catnapping by six months and they are still catnapping, at this point I would focus on no more catnapping at the midday sleep. So start to really consolidate and lengthen out that midday sleep. You might need to do a bit of sleep training if it's quite a habit for your baby to have a short midday sleep and again the reason why I do this is not because I think every baby should be on our routines is because we do see after six months children who still have three or four short sleeps a day they begin to wake up overnight overtired so those short sleeps aren't quite as restorative as a long sleep and this becomes particularly apparent after six months so if you begin to see a wake up in the evening after 45 minutes or two hours or even a wake up between 9 and 10 at night, that can be a pretty good sign that your baby is overtired. And what will really help that is consolidating your midday sleep into a really um, beautiful and restorative, which means, you know, really great for the body, so a really restorative sleep. So you might have to do some sleep training, but, you know, you might have tried with your baby when they were younger and thought, this is way too hard, I can't get my baby to stop catnapping, and that's fine, you know, we all go through those stages, um, but I would say if you've got a baby at six months who's still catnapping, it's going to be much easier now to work on the catnapping than it will be at nine, or ten months, or twelve months, and it's even easier than when they were really little, because they can definitely self-settle from six months, so the process is quite quick, and it's it's pretty simple if you get all your ducks in a row. So that's a nice, simple goal to focus on, which will really help your baby to have um, some great healthy sleep habits from six months. Okay, and my last tip for six-month-old babies is we've worked on naps, <laughs> we've worked on swaddling, and the last thing is dream feeds. So it's another stop, which is quite easy. If you are still dream feeding from six months, so that is that your baby is asleep, and you go in and you pick them up and you feed them in their sleep. So they're not awake. They are asleep, so we call it a dream feed. And you go in sort of between 10 and 11 at night and you do a dream feed. If you are doing one, then from six months I would begin to start the weaning off that dream feed. And this is not because I believe every six month old baby should sleep all night with no milk. It's simply because from six months something is occurring with their sleep cycles at night. They're, they're changing, you know, they go through yet another change. And the problem is if you continue with a dream feed much beyond six months, we do see the babies begin to wake up more frequently overnight, which nobody wants. So if you are, have a baby older than six months and you're watching this video, and you do a dream feed at, say, 10 o'clock and then at 1 a.m., you have a wake up, that is a good sign that your dream feed is interfering with your baby's nighttime sleep and actually making the situation worse. So if you've got a child leading up to six months, it's time to begin weaning off the dream feed. And then if your baby still needs a feed overnight, which lots of babies do, I would just let them wake up naturally on their own. And they should naturally push that feed out from 10 o'clock to 11 or 12 or 1 or 2. Some will go all the way through 3 or 4 in the morning. And then it gives you a very clear sign when they are ready to drop their feed completely. They'll push it later and later in the night. They won't be interested in their breakfast, that sort of scenario. But just don't hold on to that dream feed for two months beyond six months because it does start to interfere with nighttime sleep and make the situation worse, not better. 
Okay, <laughs> so there's your top three um, tips for making sure your six month old is and continues to be an awesome sleeper. We want to wean off the dream fees, stop swaddling and consolidate that midday sleep. And if you do need any help with any of those things at all, please feel free to send us a message. We'd love to give you some one-on-one -on -one help and support you through those changes in any way that we can. Okay, now I have some questions to answer for those of you who've hung around for the Q&A. So these are from our Facebook page earlier on today. If you have a question for me and you're watching this as a replay, please pop it in the comments and I will answer it for you. I'll just type out your answer. And if you're watching this live and you have a question, <clears throat> you can post it on our Facebook, the post from this afternoon, or in this live chat, and I'll see both of them. Okay, so, in no particular order of importance, Amanda says she's got an almost nine-month-old that normally is only woken once a night, which is pretty cool, but has recently started waking more often. Currently still having three naps a day. No teeth yet, started commando crawling about two weeks ago, love solids. Any advice would be appreciated. I'm thinking it's a combo of too much sleep, I think so in the day and maybe teeth and her brain getting used to crawling and maybe separation anxiety. Amanda, you're on the money. Nine months, I would definitely drop to two naps and then be aware that yes, all of that crawling and teething will be interfering, making those sort of um, partial arousals a bit more difficult for your baby to go back to sleep from. But if she can self-settle at nine months, she can definitely put herself back to sleep overnight. So once you drop that third nap, you know, you can be confident that she can go back to her her one feed that she was having overnight, and you shouldn't need to do much more to get her back to sleep. Okay, Carla has a six month old who up until last week was sleeping through the night. Wow, that's lucky. Um, who went down with no fast and self settled. Now I can't get her to sleep or him to sleep without feeding or rocking for his naps and his main sleep. When putting him down for the night, he now wakes after an hour. I resettle him, which can take up to an hour, and then he wakes again about two hours later and then a couple of times through the night. She catnaps through the day, falls asleep on me, sometimes she'll sleep longer if we go in the car. Okay, Carla, it's almost like I staged that question, because I've said earlier in the talk today that if you don't get on top of the catnapping by six months, then we do start to see the nighttime sleep fall apart. So you see that wake up early in the evening, and the frequent wake ups overnight. So if your baby's not cat is, is catnapping and is not consolidating their sleep yet, which you've said he is still catnapping. I think he's getting overtired from those catnaps. They're not quite restorative enough for him. Um, and I think also he probably doesn't have a very good resettling skill just yet. So we probably need to teach him to do some resettling during the day and that will knock into his night as well. So he needs longer sleeps during the day or at least one long sleep during the day and we need to work on his resettling skills. And if you're struggling to settle him as well, that's probably tied in with the resettling as well. So a kind of self-settling overhaul needs to occur, and that's going to consolidate the naps and help with that overtiredness in the evening. Andrew's got a five-month-old waking three hours like clockwork overnight. He's in a sleep sack, dark room, dummy attached to a snuggly. Is this because she's fed every three hours during the day? That's a good question. Um, or are these her sleep cycles? Oh, I like this question. Also, has recently started waking at 11 p.m. and is really hungry. Guzzles her bottle. Is this because of not enough calories during the day? Or is she tricking me? <laughs> P.S. Love the $7 book I purchased last week. I've gone from holding her to sleep to having herself settle. Wow, Andrea, that's amazing. I am so pleased you like it. And what an awesome deal, right? $7. I'll pop that link below as well if anyone wants that deal. So, using the book, Andrea, you've managed to teach her to self-settle, which, and I guess all of your, is this because? It's because you've been reading my book. So, um, the three-hour wake-ups overnight is not because she's fed three hourly throughout the day. It's just the end of her partial sleep cycles overnight. And you're probably doing something to reinforce it. So, if you've taught her to self-settle during the day, let her self settle at night and if she just needs that one feed at 11 p.m. which is fine for a five month old i would give her that feed and let her guzzle back that bottle but then use your whatever you used you know to teach her to go from holding to sleep to self settling during the day do that at night and that will work just as well as it did during the day if not better because nighttime sleep is often easier to solve than daytime sleep um so the bottle at 11 p.m i don't think she's tricking you or that you can hugely um, alter her calories during the day. She's only five months old. It's super normal for her to need a feed overnight. 
Um, and I think if you work on the reset name using your new technique from the No Cry um, book you bought, that will work overnight and you'll get rid of those three hourly wake ups. Okay, Donna has a five month old following the routines we emailed out. Thank you. That's awesome. If you want those routines, and I swear I haven't staged these questions, um, I'll pop the link for those in the comments below as well. And they're free, which is great. Um, resettles well generally, but has started either being either wide awake after a night feed or waking early at 5 30 and wide awake. I leave him for 30 minutes and he'll start to grizzle. Go and give him a cuddle and he'll fall back to sleep. That's pretty good. Is this a routine or developmental problem? He's just started rolling. Yeah, if he's just started rolling and he's out of his swaddle, which is awesome, he's got white noise, he's not cold. It sounds like it's just a little blip, you know, with his age. Um, your nap's a good 9.30, 4.30 and a long sleep in the middle of the day. And if he just has a cuddle and goes back to sleep. I think it sounds like he's on the right track, Donna, and I wouldn't change much. I think it sounds like he's a pretty good sleeper. Probably because of the awesome routine you're using. Okay, the answer to five and a half months old who self settles at night, bedtime seven o'clock, usually wakes once for a feed around 5am but is awake and ready to start the day. Very hard to get back to sleep. How do I encourage later wake up or more sleep after that feed? That's hard. That's such a hard time of the day because, you know, a full feed at 5am, you can't not feed her because um, he or she's been asleep since bedtime and no feed, you know, and only five and a half months they're hungry. But then they are quite likely to think that's morning. And I remember this with my own kids when they pushed this feed all the way through to five. And for a few days, I assisted to sleep, which worked really well. And I do recommend that to some clients. If you have a way that you can very easily assist to sleep. So if you know you can guarantee you just hold your baby and they'll stay asleep. Or you can just pat them and they'll stay asleep. I would do that through to morning time after that feed just to re-establish the fact that it is time to go back to sleep and then once they're more used to going back to sleep from that time then I would allow them to self-settle again so you might do some sleep training from that time through to morning to help them learn that it's still night time from 5am and if you start solids at six months and all of that jazz you'll probably find that 5am feed drops off in anywhere from like two to six weeks so it's not going to be a problem for very long she also says, when would the first morning nap be after an early start? Also recently been having 20 minutes, been having 20 minutes day nap. How do I encourage longer naps? Okay, so the longer naps might be contributing to your early start as well, Leanne. Sorry, the shorter naps. She might be getting overtired. Um, but basically, we need to teach her to self-settle and then resettle into some longer sleep. So that's how we teach them to have those longer naps. Um, and it is quite a process, it can take a couple of weeks to be effective, but like I've said in tonight's talk, it's super important to get on top of that around the six month age to help preserve um, their night's sleep going forward. Okay, Bethany said I'm nearly six months old on Thursday and it's taking three hours plus to get to sleep at night, so it's a long time. This is a huge improvement, but still really stressful with two other children in the house. She has started self-settling during the day, but no matter what I do, she seems to scream bloody murder at night and won't stop. <laughs> okay. Bethany, I would be wanting to check that she has a great bedtime routine, which I know can be really hard with two other kids in the house, um, and that she's having really good naps during the day, so she's not overtired, and she's not hungry. Does she need to have more feeds in the evening? Does she need to start solids? All that stuff needs to be in place. And then if she's still screaming, I would just make sure that whatever I was doing as a, as a parent um, wasn't overstimulating her, so try to be super consistent with it, whether it means wait till the weekend when hubby's home or you can get a friend or your mum to come around so that you can focus for two or three nights on just the baby and not have um, your other kids being a, you know, it's hard to do that juggle. So if you can just get a couple of nights where you can just focus on the baby, you might get on top of that. But first I would want to check that they were um, not overtired or hungry in the early evening time. Kristen has a baby who I really struggle to settle at night. Crying lots once we put him in his bed. He's drowsy. Then once we finally have him asleep, he will frequently wake for the first three hours. Mostly settles by shush pat and dummy. Oh, the other five months old has a dummy that I read about before. Let me scroll back. I can't remember who it was. Andrea, five months old. You might need to get rid of the dummy. I just remember that. Um, okay, 
so first it has this baby who is mostly settled by shush pat and a dummy. Can self-settle during the night. Doesn't feed to sleep, but on the night, hard nights, lots of crying, will bounce, rock, cuddle him to sleep. Bed is 6.37, wakes two, three times a night. 7.30 a.m. wake up, two hour nap in a day. Struggle with the last nap, been trying to get him to sleep for at least 15 minutes. It's cool. Through to any means so he's not overtired. Kristen, definitely try to do that last nap assistive. That will really help. So even if you start that sleep at 4.30 so that you've got a 15 minute kind of lead up to making sure that nap occurs at um, 4.45 and, and 15 minutes um, is fine if your baby's kind of 4 or 5 or 6 months old. I'm not sure how old your baby is, you haven't mentioned. Um, and then the other thing to think about is if you're shushing and patting and, and using a dummy, I would assume the baby's quite little. Otherwise, if they're over four months, I'd probably start backing that off and, and using some self-settling strategies. But you just want to make sure whatever you're doing is consistent and not overstimulating your baby. You know, if there's lots of crying involved, then maybe what you're doing isn't quite a good fit. And baby just wants a dummy or just wants to be patted to sleep or, yeah, there's usually too much going on if there's a lot of crying in the in the early evening around settling time and it's you know it's when we we kind of pat for a few minutes and then we panic and pick them up and rock them and then we panic and put the dummy in and then we panic some more and put them down and try and pat them some more and then we pick them up again and if they're a young baby this is just really overstimulating and just makes them cry in the evening so it's about doing kind of one thing for longer and trying to make sure they're not overtired as well when they go down and they're not hungry but it's I feel like I need some more information to be more specific, Kirsten, because I'm not really sure how old your baby is. Okay, Debbie, my six-month-old wakes one, two, three times between bed and, between bed. Oh, between bedtime and dream sleep, so between 6.30 and 10.30, wakes one to three times. This then starts to wake every hour from one or two till seven. I only have three day sleeps, which are between 35 and 50 minutes. Boom, another one. I told you. <laughs> If we don't get on top of the, the short naps during the day, then the night sleep falls apart. So this is another scenario where the short naps during the day are affecting your nights, Debbie. We need to get on top of those cat naps and consolidate them, and that will help your nights. And then there might be a kind of residual pattern happening at night, and we might need to do some sleep training at night as well. But the first thing would be to work on those naps being longer during the day. Emma... Hi Emma. She's been using our sleep routines after working with Jo, who's one of our Auckland consultants. My little guy is a week away from turning seven months and last two days has refused his four thirty nap. What age would you continue that nap until? So usually until seven or eight months, depends on the baby. Um, give them a kind of week. And if you're going for a walk every day or you're doing something to assist them every day for that nap and they refuse for a good week, then it's probably time to drop it as opposed to a couple of days where it's just a little blip and they come back to having that nap. Christina said how to teach her to link her day cycles. That is like the million dollar question. With five and a half months old, I have to pat her through to keep her asleep. Otherwise, those eyes are open and her day sleep is all over. Which I'm sure lots of us can, um, you know, appreciate. Nights are better, but after her first wake around 11 or 12, she's up every one, two, three hours. Bedtime is 6.30. So that's another baby whose short naps are affecting her nighttime sleep. Um... Christina, I think we need to teach her to self-settle during the day if she's not already, and then apply the same technique to teach her to reset and go back to sleep. And yes, you will have to go through the phase of her being wide awake after one sleep cycle, because she needs to learn to go from wide awake after a 45-minute nap to drowsy and back to sleep on her own. And that really is the only way to get her to link those sleep cycles together at that age. Teresa, I have an amazing eight month old boy who sleeps at night, but we struggle throughout the day. He falls asleep on me feeding, but just won't go down in his cot. His last nap is about half an hour to 45 minutes tops. Any tips on getting him to sleep in his cot during the day? Teresa, I would love to give you a quick fix, but going from holding and feeding to sleep to self settling is quite a massive process. So it's kind of three to five stages over one to four weeks. So it's a massive process because I don't recommend cry-based sleep training for children who usually are um, held and, and fed to sleep. I recommend a more gentle approach. So apart from beginning to get him into his cot awake rather than asleep, 
but it's, it's, that's a million dollar question. How do you do that and what do you do after he's in a cot crying? Um, and that's a bit more than I can do in a live video, sorry. But I'll pop the link up for you for our um, gentle sleep guide if you want to have a look at that. Alexia, how do you convert a catnapper into a long day sleeper? So Alexia, I've talked about that quite a bit tonight, but it's basically about teaching your baby to resettle after the short sleep. And first of all, they need to be able to self-settle. So can they self-settle and then use the same technique? So a bit of sleep training to teach them to resettle. There's not really any magic kind of um, method or pixie dust for that one. And it can take anywhere from five to ten days for them to start to consolidate their naps when you are doing that kind of sleep training. Lizzie said, do you think weaning method affects sleep? Six months old, currently on two meals, baby led weaning, so not eating much and waking two to three times to feed overnight. So maybe spoon feeding would help. Um, Lizzie, yes I do. And it was kind of supported at the symposium about baby led weaning that I attended. And it's nothing negative, it's just the baby led weaned babies don't eat as much as spoon fed babies to start off with. So they often do need um, extra feeding overnight. So when we're working with clients who are using baby lead weaning, our expectations on their night sleep is not as long as babies who are being spoon fed. So my ultimate um, advice is to do both. Always often finger food from six months, but also spoon feed some really awesome food in as well so they get the calories they need, especially if you are wanting to work on nighttime sleep. Okay, now I'll try and find you live for your questions. And we'll see how much Facebook is playing ball tonight. But if you are watching this and you have a question for me and you're watching the replay, um, I will type some answers up for you, so feel free to pop them in the comments below for me. Okay, Jessica, my 11th month old wakes this week, thinks 5am is new wake up time. He naps at 10 and 2 from anywhere from 45 minutes to 1.5 hours. How can I drag this out? So 11 months waking at 5 a.m. Um, Jessica, I think your first nap of the day is too late at 10 o'clock and your second nap is too late as well. So your baby sleeps from 2 to kind of 3.30, which is not ideal. I, I prefer all daytime sleep to kind of be between 9 and 3 once they're not needing that third nap. So kind of, and once they can wait till 9 o'clock in the morning, so sort of 4 or 5 months onwards. Um, so I think all day sleep should be in that you know, or the majority of day sleep should be in that window of 9 till 3, and when it's not, that can start to cause things like nighttime wake-ups and early morning wake-ups. So my first thing would be to try our routines instead of that strategy, which at 11 months would be like a 9 30 till 10, and a 12 30 to 2 30, or a 1 to 3, <clears throat> that kind of scenario. And then you might need to do some sleep training from 5 o'clock in the morning to get rid of that early wake-up. Carla, thanks for answering my question, but how do I link a sleep cycle? So I've tried to resettle him but nothing has worked. Carla, it's usually that we are trying to resettle them and they need to resettle themselves. So if your baby is older than four months, then it's, they can resettle themselves after a short sleep cycle as opposed to us doing it for them. So when people say, I find everything that doesn't work, it's because we need to back off a little bit. So that would probably be that scenario. Jay said, my eight months old is still in a safety sleep and hands covered sleeping bag. Any tips to wean off as she rolls onto her tummy and cries? or crawls around the cot without it. Um, yes, Jade. So that's totally normal. Your eight months old wants to crawl around the cot, probably wants to sleep on his tummy as well if he can roll into his tummy. So I would just go to a regular sleeping bag, take the safety sleep off, he will roll over onto his tummy and cry, and that's fine. He's like, what's going on? I've been in my swaddle for eight months. And like I mentioned earlier, it becomes a bit of a prop. So you would just go in there and then depending on your child and, and your parenting style, you can either sit with him and, and kind of soothe him with some touch and voice and, um, you know, being there for him while he's upset through that. Adjust him if he needs it. If he gets upset and stuck in the corner, you can bring him back down. You can roll him over a couple of times if he really hates it. But ultimately, he will get used to it. You know, he's not going to love it the first night um, at bedtime. He probably won't wake up throughout the night. Bedtime will be difficult, um, but ultimately he just needs to get used to it. So it's whether or not you want to stay in the room with him and support him through that, or if you're happy to leave him to it for 10 minutes and then come in and check on him and leave him for another 10 minutes, that sort of scenario. But the safety sleep and the sleeping bag has become a prop. 
So um, it's, it's like getting rid of any prop. He's not going to like it. And Colleen says, I so need that book. <laughs> I'll pop the link down for you if you want to check it out, guys. Um, and Facebook's doing the, its wonderful strategy of showing me four questions and then the rest disappear. So if I have missed your live question, I'll jump in the comments and type it out for you um, once this is not live. But otherwise, I'll keep answering the ones that do appear for me. So if you do have a question, feel free to ask it now. Otherwise, when I get off this video, I will pop up the infographic for you for those three things to remember to work on if you've got a six months old. I will put the link to our free routines if you need a routine change. And I'll put a link to the, the sleep guide that's $7 to work on sleep training without cried out as well. As I know Colleen says she wants to have a look at that, so I'll pop that link up for you as well and if you are watching this as a replay please pop your questions below and i'll answer them for you and share this video with anybody who you think this could be useful for so anyone with a baby under six months or around that six seven eight months that may or may not have known you know these things that they needed to have happened um by six months and i promise the questions that came in tonight um, they weren't staged, but you can see how relevant they are to the top three things that I've mentioned that you do need to know about your six month old. So the unswaddling, you know, we've had someone tonight already say that their um, eight or nine months old is still swaddled in a safety sleep and it's affecting their sleep, it's becoming a prop. Um, and heaps of examples of needing to consolidate that nap, that midday nap into a bigger sleep because lots of parents tonight have talked about how their children are waking more frequently overnight and coincidentally they're having short naps during the day and that's because those short naps once we hit the six month period are not as restorative as a decent sleep and it affects their nighttime sleep um and the last one was the dream feed so be really proactive and if you are still dream feeding which is when your baby is completely asleep and you go in and do a feed if you are still dream feeding then from six months is the perfect time to begin weaning off that dream feed and either seeing if they can A, sleep through the night or let them wake up naturally for a feed if they're still hungry rather than forcing the dream feed on them, which can then cause more wake ups overnight, which we don't want from six months. Okay, Millie has said I have a seven month old, five months corrected. She used to be an amazing sleeper 12 hours overnight. Up until three weeks ago, she's now waking three to four times a night. She's never been a good day sleeper. Any tips on getting her back to sleep all in all night? Millie, once this video is posted to the wall, I suggest you watch it from the beginning because it's going to be those short naps during the day that are making your nights fall apart. So the tip for getting her nights back on track will be to work on her longer day sleeps and her nights at the same time. So making sure that she can self-settle and resettle and then use the same skills at night, the self-settling and the resettling. Um, so probably doing some sleep training. And that doesn't mean cry it out, it just means some form of method teaching your baby how to self-settle, whether it's gentle with you in the room or whether it's cry-based, you know, with you coming and going or staying out completely. Okay. And Jessica's got a five month old, has three or four short naps, 45 minutes, and sleeps from 7 to 8 a.m. with feeds at 1 and 5.30. He often wakes a lot in the night but will re resettle by me. So he's waking up more than those times that mum's managing to resettle him. We've just put him in a sleeping bag, has white noise and a dummy. Do I need to start self-settling and consolidating his lunch sleep? I think I need the, I need the email five month old routine. Okay, so you might need to get rid of the dummy too, Jessica. That might be why he's waking up for you to pop the dummy in. Babies can't usually put their own dummy back in until closer to sort of seven or eight months. So five months, that's two to three months away. So that's two to three months of you putting the dummy back in um, overnight. And that might also be why he's having those short naps during the day, again, because he needs you to settle him and you to resettle him with the dummy. So, in all honesty, I would probably take the dummy away and work on self-settling and resettling throughout the day and throughout the night and consolidating that midday sleep. Hannah said, my six months old sleeps through the night and has mostly good linked naps issues. 
she would be going to bed. She wants to be held to sleep to start with. Hannah, she only wants to be held to sleep once a day, and she sleeps brilliantly the rest of the night, and naps brilliantly. I wouldn't worry about it. Unless it takes her hours to fall asleep, I wouldn't panic. Oh, that's an interesting name. Phelan. Did I say that right? And I'm sorry if I didn't. I have a five-month-old twin. They're awesome day sleepers, but suck at night. <laughs> that's not good. They go to bed at 6.30, we dream feed them at 10pm, but then they wake constantly between 10 and 7. We end up feeding them around 3 or 4 if they can't be resettled. Help me, I'm dying of sleep deprivation. I bet you feel like you are, and I'm so sorry. Um, a quick thing to try would be try dropping the dream feed and see if they sleep longer. They might sleep through till midnight or 1, and then if you go to bed at 8, you could sleep till midnight or 1, and that would feel amazing because you haven't slept properly in months. Um, five month old twins, I'm going to assume they're at least three weeks early, so they're possibly only four months old, um, corrected, so they could need two feeds a night, but of those, all those other wake-ups where they can't be resettled, I would probably look at teaching them how to self-settle, so instead of you having to go in and resettle and resettle, they can start to do some self-settling, so make sure you've got some good white noise, so one twin isn't completely waking the other twin, Make sure they're gaining weight well. Often twins are preemie and they start out small. Um, and we want to make sure feeding's going great. If you're tandem breastfeeding, that can be a challenge. We want to make sure that that's going fantastic. If you're formula feeding, we want to make sure that the volumes are great and they're gaining good amounts of weight. And then it would be a matter of um, teaching them to self-settle. And if they can take great naps during the day, I would say they have some element of the ability to self-settle. Also, make sure they're not oversleeping during the day. If they're having really great sleeps, it can be tempting to let them sleep. And let's assume they're four months corrected. They need three to four hours sleep a day, tops. So if they're having much more than that, that could be affecting their nights as well. Anima, an <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Animal. <laughs> Annabelle. Best way to get rid of one bottle a night for an eight and a half month old. Bottle sometime between three and five. Um, yeah, reduce the amount in the bottle at night. Annabelle, good strategy, 30 mils a night, and then gone. Sarah, seven months old, just started waking once a night between two to four for a feed, but only lasted a few days. Now back to two wake-ups at night, between 11, one, two, and four. Never been a good napper, two to three naps per day, nine a.m., 45 minutes to one hour, and 12 o'clock being one hour. So Sarah, sounds like your baby is overtired and we probably need to work on those naps. And then if they have shown you sort of hunger-wise that they can go all night with one feed, um, and I'm still saying they like I'm talking about twins, but if your baby has shown you that they can get through the night on one feed at that age, I would tend to stick with one feed and assume that that other feed is possibly overtiredness or some other kind of habitual wake-up um, and not necessarily hunger. Unless you're not doing solids or something crazy. And have a five month old who won't sleep for more than two hours at a time at night. I've been feeding him. It's the only way to settle him. I feel like it's getting worse. Been happening for about six weeks. And yeah, so happening for six weeks means it has started around three and a half months, which is pretty bang on for those nighttime sleep cycles becoming two to four hours long, as opposed to being six hours, which is when we feed the bit bedtime and they wake up around midnight, feed them again, they get through to morning and we think this is awesome, they've got this sorted and then they have short naps during the day but we don't worry because their nighttime sleep is pretty cool and then what happens is their nighttime sleep changes which every baby, it does for every baby and they go through these partial wake ups every two hours and feeding back to sleep definitely works and if you're happy doing it, keep doing it but if it's not working for you and, you know, it's been going on for six weeks and you're getting exhausted, um, <clears throat> then I would say he probably needs to work on some self-settling as well. So whether that looks, you know, how that looks is up to you guys as parents, whether you're in the room with them or not. Um, we can help you with gentle sleep training or cry-based sleep training, depending on how fast you want it to occur and um, your baby's temperament. But that is definitely a um, self-settling issue overnight. And Sarah said sometimes he has half an hour, three to four, goes to bed at six. I think that was part of your other question, Sarah. You're seven months old. 
Yeah, that half an hour here between three and four, I would try and push that to four to five. That might have an immediate help on your nighttime sleep. And also babies at that age who still have a nap between three and four often will not consolidate their lunchtime sleep because they're having a nap between three and four and it ties them over. So I would push it out past four. Okay, one more question from Tim. Six months old has a late third nap. Use around 4.45, should I wake her around 5 or leave her to wake on her own? Or drop that nap completely? Um, don't drop that nap. <laughs> I would keep that nap until closer to 8 months, Tim. So, and 15 minutes, I know people think that's not even a nap, you know. And I know other people say never wake a sleeping baby. I say wake your baby. And 4.45 till 5 at 6 months is perfect. And I know that loads of you are going to think I'm completely crazy, but it's just a little tiny power nap to get them through the evening bedtime routine. So at bedtime, they're not completely ridiculously overtired, but they're very tired, and they then do a nice big nighttime sleep for you. If you let your baby just nap for as long as they want at 4.45, chances are, due to increased melatonin levels at that time of day and um, a decrease in body temperature and that sort of thing, They'll start to think their nighttime sleep has begun and they'll stay asleep until maybe 9 or 10 o'clock at night, but then they'll think it's party time. So I always wake them up at 5 o'clock. Unless they fall asleep at like 5 to 5, and then I might give them 10 minutes. Um, can I wake you but I feel so bad? Don't feel bad. She sleeps brilliantly and wakes once a night. And she has great naps during the day. She's doing awesome. Don't feel bad. Um, and Laura, my almost 7 months old, and on that point, just don't get the feeling bad about waking your baby up. Your kids are going to get woken up by an alarm clock for the rest of their life. You need to get rid of that guilt. You know, my three kids all have an alarm clock that's set. They need to get up to school. I have an alarm clock. It's fine. It's healthy to wake at similar times throughout the day and in the morning and go to bed at similar times in the evening. It's one of the fundamental things which helps create awesome, healthy sleep, you know. If you're an adult struggling with sleep out there, Set yourself a set bedtime and a set wake-up time in the morning and work with your circadian rhythm. It's the most awesome way to make your sleep way better and you will start to feel way better in the morning when you wake up than if you stay up till 11.30 at night watching Netflix, you know, fall asleep in bed watching Netflix and then you just you feel like shit at 7 o'clock in the morning. And that's not because you only got 8 hours sleep from 7 till 8. It's because the night before you went to bed at 9, and the night before that was 10, and the night before that was midnight, you know, there's no set bedtime. And it seems crazy because we're adults, but we're the same as kids and babies. Set bedtimes, set wake-up time in the morning, and set nap times for babies makes them such awesome sleepers and content. They love it. I promise you, they love it. Okay, Amy. Two more questions, Amy and Jennifer, because I'm totally losing my voice from... Um, been out in the cold today. Okay, my six month old has started losing it every time I put her down to sleep or sleep at night. It can take up to two hours to get her into her cot. Any ideas? Amy, if it's taking that long, and from what you said, get her into her cot, um, I think you're picking her up a lot, and I think you're overstimulating her. So I would look to just tone it down a bit, pick her up less, um, spend more time with her in the cot, with you soothing her, using your voice or touch, that kind of thing. But I think you're probably overstimulating her just from your little comment in that post. And Jennifer said, my five and a half month old night sleep has been very random for the last seven weeks or so. Some nights goes down and I don't hear from her till three. Oh, that must feel amazing. Um, but most nights wakes any time from one to three hours after going down and then very hard to resettle. Jennifer, see if the naps during the day are consistent. And if they're not, you probably notice the days where the naps are not good that you get that frequent wake up in the evening. And it's usually over tiredness. Okay, Kate, we are a complete mess of parents. After watching this, we've realized how much we don't know about sleep. It's got us stressed. Kate, don't stress about it. There's so much to learn. And if your kid's doing great, then that's awesome. If they're not doing great, then there is heaps to learn and we can help. Um, but some parents just naturally kind of fall into it. And some babies are really cruisy, cruisy sleepers. And they just cruise, and they're awesome, and they're happy. But other babies are not, and they're really hard to settle, and they wake all night, and they take short naps, and they're grumpy, 
And those are the ones who need help, you know? So don't let this stress you out because there is so much information out there and it's so conflicting. Um, and it's about doing what works for your family. And if, despite what I say and what Google says and Plunkett says, if you're happy and it's working for you, then it's 100% fine. If you're not happy with the scenario and it's not working for you and you're stressed or your mental health is suffering or your baby is grumpy, then we can help. But only if you want the help, you know. So don't feel like because um, everyone else is doing something, you should. And that's, I think that's so important. You know, I spoke to this mum this week who said, after asking her coffee group how their baby slept, and she, they said um, at like 11 weeks old, their babies all slept through the night. This mum then felt like she was doing everything wrong and she was failing and she decided, right, I'm going to stay home for the next however long it takes to sort my baby out and make them sleep through the night and take all these kick-ass naps because my coffee group babies all sleep brilliantly. And she couldn't achieve it in a week. She didn't know what she was doing. And actually, her baby's doing pretty good. You know, her baby's doing pretty average for an 11-week-old after talking to her. But she took all of that on and herself... And, and then ruined her week at home, you know, trying to make her baby sleep in a way that she didn't need to. So I guess what I'm saying is just because someone tells you that their baby is doing something, if you're happy with how things are in your house, then that's cool because everyone can be different, you know. Um, it's only if you're not happy and you want to change something that I would look for some change and then ask some people what they're doing and, and get some help. Um, so Katie, you're not a complete mess of parents. Um, I'm really sure of that, so please don't feel like that after hearing me talk. That's not my goal. And if you want some help, get in touch. Otherwise, I'm going to turn this live video off and go and get a hot drink because I'm totally losing my voice. And um, I will post those links for you guys in the comments for the, the ebook if you want to download it, seven bucks, and the free routines if you're needing one from what I've said to you tonight, and the infographic for the six month olds. So please share this video if you have anyone who needs to watch it and um, feel free to private message me or jump onto our website if you want some more help. We can do one-on-one -on -one consultations or come and chat to your whole coffee group like this, which is great. Um, it's a nice environment as long as your whole coffee group babies don't all sleep through the night and you're the only one, then it's not such a nice environment. So maybe we'll just come and chat one-on-one. -on -one. Um, okay, well I hope you have enjoyed this talk. I'm Emma, the owner of Baby Sleep Consultant, and good night.